What is up, YouTube? Today I'm riding a 2018 Honda Grom. Let's start it up. And we're off here. All right, so this is the first time I've ridden a Honda Grom. I rented the bike for the day actually. We're uh, taking it for a ride. I'm testing it out, seeing how it goes. The clutch is kind of, so it releases at the very end of the, the clutch pull here. So that's kind of interesting. Got to get used to that still. Make sure my signal's not on. There we go. All right. This is my first time ever riding a Honda Grom. Everyone raves about the Honda Grom, and I kind of wanted to check it out and see why they're so popular. So far though, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I gotta say that. I'm doing 45 right now, and I think I'm in fifth gear. We're going up a hill in fifth gear, here we go. And we're picking up speed, that's not too bad. Going 50 now. Let's talk about the size first. When I pulled up, I think I think it looked bigger in person than on video. That's what she said. Yeah, it looks bigger in person. I mean, when I think about the Grom, I think of a tiny little, you know, kid's bike. But in reality, it's not all that small. So we got the Honda Grom here. It's a 2018. I just wanted to show the size of the Grom here. Me standing next to this. It's a pretty small bike. I'm 5'11", 6 foot negative 1, as some people call it. You can see the bike's pretty, pretty small when I step on it here. My ankles are showing. I know that's, you know, that's pretty immodest. Yeah, I mean, you can see kind of how much my legs are bent here. And this is the riding position. So, going down the road, this is what you look like. So as you can see, my legs are, you know, pretty crunched up here. My legs are almost at the top of the tank. I'm 5'11", so pretty average size. It's definitely a smaller bike. You're gonna be more crunched up on this bike. The seating position is pretty upright though. Like, I'm pretty much sitting all the way upright. And let's try out the brakes. Decent, good enough, you know, good enough for now. Suspension is very, very soft on this one. This is a rental bike. Yeah, you know, I can't speak for a, a new 2023 Grom. This is a 2018, so it's possible the suspension is worn out. I have two side mirrors here. They actually give a pretty good view of the road and they're they're sticking out pretty far here. When I'm sitting in traffic though, I feel like since I'm sitting so upright, I feel like I'm a normal sized bike almost. All right, cancel that and... All right, here we go, full, full pin. Here we go. We're going full, full, wide, wide open throttle. <laughs> so the owner of this bike has actually replaced the uh, rear sprocket. He replaced it to get a little bit more acceleration, you know, a little bit less top speed, just more down low acceleration. So this isn't a completely stock Grom. So it's pretty smooth taking off. Shifting is pretty smooth. It's definitely got some power down low. Oh, so from what I've read, this bike only has seven to ten horsepower it's not going to be super fast it's also really light so that helps with the acceleration and everything but here we go we're taking some corners oh yeah this is nice it actually feels really stable in the corners i feel like i can move it really easily so i rented this bike today using a service called riders share it's a new motorcycle rental service 
It's where owners rent out their own bikes that they own. So it's kind of like Turo, but for motorcycles. We're, we're testing it out today, seeing how it goes. They have a bunch of different bikes on that website. I wanted to rent a Grom to just, you know, a small bike to test out and drive around. This is actually pretty fun, I'm not going to lie. Going lower speeds here, bike is super easy to handle. It feels really light. I know I say that about almost every bike once we're moving, but at low speeds here, like at low speeds, I can really maneuver this thing. It's a little jerky on and off the throttle. I've hit the end of the road here. So we're going to do a tight U-turn and see how it goes. So just nice and easy. Oh yeah, this thing is so easy to maneuver. Alright, here we go. This is me turning into traffic here and getting up to speed. That's not bad, honestly. You can get up to speed fairly quickly. I'm in fifth gear right now doing 45 and we're at 6,000 RPM. And the vibrations are present. They're not too bad though. It's a single cylinder engine. There's a cult following. People that have these love these. So I wanted to rent one, try it out. I don't think it's something I'd ever buy just because I don't have a need for a small bike like this. So far, it's been pretty fun. I've only ridden it for what, 10, 15 minutes now? It's been pretty fun. I'm going up a hill here. I keep wanting a sixth gear. I don't know why, maybe like an overdrive gear. But I understand, it only has 10 or less horsepower. It needs shorter gearing for city driving and whatnot. There's not much power up top, honestly. All the power is gonna be the lower RPM range. I'm pretty comfortable doing 45 on here, but Here's the problem, Phoenix and the surrounding cities, the speed limit's 45 in most places. You see, you have people doing stuff like that, going, uh, you know, 50, 55 on these surface streets, and suddenly it's, it's a little bit more difficult to keep up. Like, if we're talking 55 is the very top speed for this bike, it definitely can't go on the freeway, so you're gonna be riding it around town. Pretty much can only stay on surface streets, and this, that's this one in particular, the gearing's been changed. How fast that bike go? I've only, I've only ridden it like 15 minutes so far, but probably like 55, oh yeah? honestly, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's pretty small, you know? I'm just trying it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I could fit a passenger. Yeah. It'd be pretty slow though, with a passenger, I don't know. Where'd you rent it? From a person, actually. Oh, yeah. See, I'm trying to keep up with traffic here. Phoenix, good old Phoenix traffic. And me again looking for a six gear. But you see I'm doing 50 and everyone's pulling away from me. Yeah, I mean, so far on the, on the city streets, it's not bad. I'm, I'm at 6,500 RPMs though, just trying to do 50. I actually came into this rental thinking I'd hate it. Well, not necessarily hate it, but I didn't think I'd like it at all. I still wanted to try it though. It's 
it's uh, it's fun, you know, it's fun getting on a small bike. I can see the appeal here. You get a bunch of these groms together in a group ride and you got all your bros on groms riding around. I can see how that'd be fun. You all got small bikes, so it's a, a little bit less serious than, you know, everyone on big bikes going 150 miles an hour. I would say this would be a good beginner bike if someone was maybe 16 and they're trying to learn younger, learning how to ride. Maybe even 18 because of the low power. You're not going to do anything. At 18, you don't have the best decision making skills. You don't want to give a sport bike to an 18 year old necessarily. It's small, it's easy to maneuver. They're not going to hurt themselves too bad. They're very forgiving. I'm going to liken it to a scooter. Although I don't want to offend anyone that has a Grom because it's, a it's much cooler than a scooter, let's be honest. I mean, it's a, it's a mini motorcycle. It's about half the size, maybe three quarters of the size of a, a regular sport bike. You know, a lot of scooters are 150 to 250 cc's. It teaches you how to shift gears though. So that part is cool. Now, I originally thought the top speed would be about 55 on here. I'm, I'm leaning towards 60 to 62 for a top speed just based on it wasn't too difficult getting to 57 so I'm sure we have a little bit more man this guy's vibing look at that imagine being that carefree even with the stock gearing I think this bike is gonna be at a high rpms most of its life because it's a Honda I wouldn't worry too much about that Hondas are Especially their motorcycles are super reliable. And I rarely ever hear issues with the Honda Grom. So I think it's going to be a fairly reliable bike. This one, it sounds great. For 125cc, it's got a deep rumble to it. When I, when I get on the throttle here, it's got a deep rumble. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I wasn't expecting that. The gearbox is pretty smooth, I gotta say. It shifts fairly easily. It was pretty easy to find neutral. I didn't have a ton of issues with that. Some bikes, it's like you're, you're pushing and pushing up, pushing down, trying to find neutral, but it's pretty simple on here. Oh look, speed cameras. I don't have to worry about that because I'm on a Grom. I got it pinned, I got it pinned. I just hit 60, that's not too bad, but I really had to wait for it to build up there. Good here. Lean it over a bit. And other way. In this bike at least the front suspension is pretty squishy. I don't really prefer that, I'd like a, a more firm front end so we don't have as much brake dive using the front brake. The rear suspension's pretty firm. Let's go uphill here. This is gonna be a steep hill. Oh yeah, look at that. I don't know if this is the stock seat or not, but not very comfortable for my butt at least.
I'm here taking a quick break from the Grom. That water looks artificially colored. And here's the Grom. Let's catch up to this other motorcycle. Go, go, go. I'm talking, I'm doing the super tuck. Here we go. And we're going downhill. Because the bike is so small, I feel like it'd be really easy to steal. Now I know most bikes are probably pretty easy to steal. Throw it in the back of a truck or throw it in the back of a van. But because of how small this bike is, I feel like it'd be even more easier to steal. I would be more concerned about leaving this somewhere because it's so small. My Suzuki DRZ400, it was such a light bike and easy to roll around. I felt like someone was going to steal it, so I was a little bit paranoid. I'm not going fast enough to really lean it over. But it's keeping up. I mean, we're almost at 7,000 RPM though, so define keeping up for you. Oh wow. The speedo is way off, I think. It just said I was doing 45, and on here it showed 54. So if the speedo is off by 10 miles an hour, then I'm actually not going very fast. <laughs> And the top speed might actually be a lot lower than I think. Oh yeah, that feels nice. It's so light and easy to lean over. Roll into it. All the way. All the way. And that was, that was doing a little bit of uphill, so you got to give a little bit of credit. Now we're going downhill now, so you got to take away a little bit of the credit we just gave it. And these curves aren't very, you know, these are pretty sweeping turns, so we're not doing too much turning here, but... All right, let's try another low speed maneuver. I think we're in first gear. Give it a little bit of clutch. Oh yeah. I'm taking a break here. We're down at the Salt River area. As you can see, it's pretty scenic. Pretty steep hill right here. Let's see. We're good, we're good. We're maintaining speed up the hill. And then uh, it's downhill. All right, I know I mentioned I rented this bike. Use my referral link in the description. Check out Rideshare. I'm not paid, I'm not endorsed by them. You can get $25 off your first ride, your first trip, your first rental on Rideshare.com. Go check out that link in the description. You know, there's not too much fancy on this bike. And I think that's the way Honda likes it. It's very simple. I'm sure it's pretty easy to work on with a single cil cylinder and everything. It's just uh, low maintenance, less things to go wrong.
we're going to be going up a, a long hill. Let's see how this goes. So we're going slightly uphill. I got it pinned. So we're picking up speed. I'm in the top gear now. Still picking up speed. And this hill is absolute hell on a road bike. Ask me how I know. It's just a straight climb. So I got it pinned going up this hill. We're only hitting 54 on the uh, speedometer. 53, we're slowing down. I don't know if I want to downshift. We're already at 7,000 RPM. 51, uh-oh. All right, here's a steeper part. And we're losing speed. Yeah, there we go, 49. We're, I can't go faster than 50 up this hill. And the cars are on my tail now. I'm kind of holding up traffic. Still pinned, we're still going uphill though. 52. That's just what it says on the speedometer. I might even be going slower than that in reality. We pretty much hit the top of the hills. Downhill is my friend. Let's see, can we tuck? He can tuck a little bit, but because of the seating position, it's it's hard to tuck. The wind, yeah, there's, there's some wind. I mean, any naked bike, and I would consider this a naked bike, is gonna have the wind hitting you right in the chest just because there's no windshield. So yeah, there's a, there's a good amount of wind on my chest, but at the same time, oh look at this guy, he's done, he's done following my slow behind. On this bike you're not gonna be going 100 miles an hour, so the wind is not that big of an issue. All right, so I'm pretty much wrapping up my ride, so let's talk about the Honda Grom. I'm gonna be honest, it's fun. It's fun to drive around. It's fun because you're just out on a motorcycle. Is it fast? No. Is it surprising for how small and the fact it only has like seven to 10 horsepower or somewhere in there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's surprising the way it does pick up speed but it's not fast, <laughs> not at all. That's not what they're going for with this bike. You can learn how to ride, you can learn how to turn, how to corner. You can really ring this bike out and drive it to the max limits without trying to kill yourself. So I think there's a place for it. For the pricing, I was seeing online the new ones, the two, uh, 2023s are 3,500. Is it worth 3,500? Uh, I don't know, maybe, I mean it's a full on motorcycle, it's just smaller than a regular motorcycle. Me personally, I've ridden uh, 1000cc sport bikes, I've ridden cruisers like those there. I personally would not buy one of these for myself, just because I would like a little bit more power, I would like a little bit more comfortable bike. This bike is definitely small and you're crunched up. I like bigger bikes, that's just me personally. It would be cool as like a, a second bike, a toy bike, something just to play around on, but I would not buy this as my primary bike. I can see how this would be popular overseas, more of the foreign market where they limit the size of bike you can have. Got pinned. All right, here we go. 